Now that we have completed all of our modeling and sculpting edits, we're ready to take all the work that we've done and replace the old original paint mesh with our newly modified retopo mesh. So to do that, the first thing we want to do is go to the Paint Objects panel, which is a copy of what we have in the Paint Workspace. And I'm going to unhide the original. And what I typically will do when I'm working in the retopo Workspace is if I know that I'm going to be accessing objects that are in the Sculpt workspace, then I will definitely have the Vox Tree layer panel exposed so that, again, I can access these objects without having to switch workspaces. So the same thing applies here for paint meshes. I brought a copy of that panel in through the Windows menu pop-ups. So with this object now visible, we now want to go to the Bake menu and choose Update Paint Mesh with Retopo Mesh. We get a prompt that warns us this is not an undoable operation. It's a good idea to save if you have not already. In this instance, I have already saved previously, so I'll click Don't Save. And then I'm going to set the texture resolution and hit OK. I'll step into the paint workspace to inspect the result. And what I'm seeing is the voxel object or the high poly object and the low poly object taking up the same space. So I need to hide the voxel object so I can see the result. Let's go back to the paint layers panel. And the work that we did in this area plus tweaking some of the UV islands caused a little bit of a mess here that we've got to clean up but that's okay we'll just use our smart materials to do so and uh, I want to point out a very important point at this juncture and that is because of those changes the ambient occlusion and the curvature map are no longer accurate so let me just clear those and we'll make new ones here shortly okay so that's step one. If you had not made any changes to the UVs, then there might not be any further changes necessary. But in this instance, we did a little bit of sculpting work. So we definitely want to bake new normal maps to do that. Let's go back to the Retopo workspace. I can hide all of these Retopo objects because we will not be using them. And as far as the paint objects, I am going to hide everything but just the objects that we worked on. So I'll just hide this mesh layer. And I'll unhide all the voxels. So like I would inside the Sculpt workspace, I can hover over the object that I want to select and hit the H key. And you'll notice in the Vox Tree layer panel it selects it for me and I can hold down the Alt key and click on the visibility icon to isolate just that part. And I will unhide these other small components. Okay. With that done, we now want to go to the Bake menu and just above our previous option here we have a new feature as well and that is the Bake Sculpt Mesh Update to Paint Layers. So it's going to bake directly to the paint mesh that we just created. So I'm going to change the baking cage, the inner and outer amount. Let's try two and we can preview that clicking this and the outer will change that to about five and we can preview that as well. And then I'll hit OK. I don't want to bake occlusion at this point. We will do that later. Seems like we're done. So I'll unhide the other paint object. 
Let's go into the paint workspace. We'll do the same thing as far as hiding our voxel object. Okay, now on the paint layer panel, we can see we have some new paint layers reflecting different objects that we created. So, this robot parent, I think that's just a blank layer that we don't need. And I think that layer one. Now, the next thing I want to do is isolate this chest piece because, once more, we have faulty information here, both color and normal map information. I don't want to delete it on the entire layer, just this individual part where the UVs were changed to do that. I don't necessarily have to isolate this, but I will just to make things a little bit easier to see. And now with that layer selected, I want to make sure all my channels are enabled because I want to basically delete everything on this object. So I'll use the erase tool and with one of these selection marquees I'll just drag select alright and uh, with that done I'll unhide everything and so you can see with our normal map we have these uh, sculpting changes reflected here now would be a good time to go ahead and bake our ambient inclusion. Before I do that, I want to go ahead and unhide everything. Let's go to Textures menu, Calculate Occlusion. Hit OK. I'll choose one of these smart materials. And you can see it's creating a curvature map for us automatically. The reason why it was important to bake all the normal maps before we baked the occlusion is because 3D Coat is treating the normal map relief as if it is literally displaced geometry. So that's a big plus. But again, we needed those normal maps baked first so that we could do that. Let's unhide our little preview. I'll scale the image map till it looks about right. We need a little bit smaller pattern. And now I want to choose the fill tool because that allows me to quickly just click on an object and it's going to fill just that object. I typically make sure use color tolerance is turned off that way it fills the entire object and not just based on color so I'll click on that okay and let's click on there bolts there all right so now we need to apply some smart materials to our buttons for the LCD screen, let's choose something like that. Zoom in. I think that'll work. So I'll click on that. And then we need a rubber, smart material. I'll just choose rubber here. Just click on these individually. And close the smart materials. And we're done. And with that, we will conclude this series. I hope you found it helpful. Thank you for watching, and we will see you next time.